the life force, the power of Vril, was all but destroyed at the fall of Atlantis, leaving many of the gods mortal. It had been ten weeks since the fall of Atlantis. A fallen world now faces a new chapter. The ten face journeys of uncertainties, of great challenges. The road of darkness and light lie ahead. A great vastness, the unknown, was filled with fields, hills, and mountains. New horizons before the eyes of Purity's teenage children, her eldest untouched by corruption, Isis, Ra, El. They walked the uncharted lands of the great beyond, while generations of mortal men came and went. Isis, hair as black as the glorious stallion's mane, her eyes green, her soft skin light brown. She stood tall, gracefully slim. Her beauty once had the eyes of many gods in the land of Atlantis. Self-confidence and self-determination were her strong suits. Her boldness and pride often got her into troubling situations, but in the end, her heart overcomes and her eyes outshine the stars of heaven. Ra, hair like the sun, eyes deep blue, tall, strongly built, rough, always ready for a fight but knows when to hold back when necessary. Self-confidence, boldness, and a potential voice of power that could command great armies. He had the love and respect of many that knew of his good heart and great wisdom. L. Hair brunette, eyes hazel green. He was strongly built like his brother Ra. El and Ra were very similar in many ways, but El enjoyed solitude most of the time. He was the embodiment of knowledge and wisdom. Sometimes his ego would overtake him, but he always managed to recenter himself. All three, Isis, Ra, and El, learned to work together as a team during the this time of the Great Divide. They journeyed for a time and settled for a time until they reached a land of greenery, rich in vegetation, divine, majestic rolling hills and mountains, a place where the Emerald Goddess Spirit poured forth all her glory. They found this place inhabited by people who had been scattered after the great destruction of Atlantis and others who came from unfamiliar lands. Years passed this way. Settlements had been established in different parts of the land of the Emerald Goddess. These communities grew into larger towns. Laws had been put in place for governance and safety. The knowledge of the people grew greater and greater. Isis, Ra, and El contributed much of the growth and knowledge during those days. They were lifted up as sages and gods by the people. Having established a community for the remnants, Isis, Ra, and El felt it was time to continue their journey 
across the great continent of the goddess of green. With them, they took a good number of people to search out new places. It came to pass, after a long journey, that they ended up in the wide open desert. This emptiness was new to them, with forces unknown. They came upon an area to settle, but within days, pride influenced by the desert jinn swelled up within Isis, Ra, and El. They angrily debated over the location for the new settlement and which of them would be ruler. For the first time in their life, their anger came to blows, thus furthering the great divide. The three took a certain number of people with them and went to areas of their own choosing. Ra went to the north, Isis to the south, and El to the east, and thus began the building of a new civilization, making way for a new era of gods. Years later, near where Atlantis fell into the waters of darkness, Enlil, his archons, and his devoted followers were unsatisfied with their current situation and location. The life force was gone, nothing for them to consume anymore. From their vantage point, they could see the beautiful new land eagerly waiting for the right time to strike new lands in low thought and devise a new plan for their next takeover. With a voice of power and great command, Inlil declared, We shall go east consuming and destroying everything in our path. Enlil, looking into the infinite horizon, exclaimed, Visions come to me. Ah, there are foes from the fallen Atlantis. Bask in the sunlight of a new paradise. As I have done before, I shall go in with cunning deception, and this time set up thrones for my descendants, and their reign shall be as an iron fist for ages to come. And so Enlil went out to conquer the land. Immortality had left the bosom of the youngest children of purity. She, who was once called Sophia. Seven there were, desperate and alone. Knowing not of their eldest siblings, they huddled together as they watched Atlantis, their home, fall into the sea. All of the children wept for their fallen homeland. All but one. She was the eldest daughter of those who would one day know death. In her, the anger swelled. As she watched everything she knew fall into the sea, she made an oath to herself, an oath to the gods that she would no longer feast with. Enlil, she screamed in her mind as the water swallowed her home and was still. If it takes countless lifetimes, I will destroy you. Countless lifetimes it would take. Turning her back on the sea that had enveloped everything she had known, still only a child herself, she 
with the eldest brother that was left, would have to be strong for them. She would put aside her vengeance for now, for them, her younger siblings. They needed her. Her brothers and sisters cried out for their mother. She wanted to, too, but she couldn't. Not now. Little did they know that many generations would pass before their mother would hear that cry. Deep, deep inside the brackish pit of hell, as it was in the beginning, a still, quiet voice is heard. I am awake. 